So here I have three edge rushers that the Denver Broncos could look at should they want to go the trade market route. Now in the left hand column I have the player name and their current team, middle column their age entering the 2022 season, and their right hand column would be their 2022 salary that the, their new team would take on in the event that they are traded. Now, first up, we have Zadarius Smith of the Green Bay Packers, who's going to be entering his age 30 season next year. Now, Smith is a former fourth-round pick in 2015 by the Baltimore Ravens. Smith played pretty well in his first three seasons in the league as predominantly a rotational player, but in 2018, in his final season with the Ravens, he broke out, recording 45 total tackles, 25 quarterback hits, and 8.5 and sacks. It was in a... Ugh. He then parlayed that into a four-year, $66 million deal in the 2019 offseason with the Green Bay Packers. Smith was a dominant edge rusher in his first two seasons as a Green Bay Packer. In his first two seasons, including playoffs, Smith combined for 119 total tackles, 66 quarterback hits, and 29 sacks while appearing in back-to-back -back Pro Bowls along with the second-team All-Pro in 2020. Unfortunately, 2021 was a total loss for Smith as he suffered a back injury in the season opener against the New Orleans Saints. Smith then required surgery and he ended up missing the remainder of the 2021 regular season. Smith returned for the playoffs where he did record a sack in the 13-10 upset loss to the 49ers in the divisional round. The Packers are widely known to be in cap hell. Zedaria Smith is scheduled to count $28 million against the cap for the Packers in 2022, and it is widely believed that Smith will be a cap casualty and the Packers will either release or trade him this offseason. Smith becomes expendable due to the emergence of Rashawn Gary in Green Bay, and the Packers will be able to save the same amount of money for Smith if he's traded or released, which is $15.3 million, while incurring a $12.4 million dead cap penalty. It is widely known that the Packers are looking to move on from Smith, and that combined with his injury may diminish his trade value. That said, I do feel there may be a GM out there who would be willing to give up draft capital to secure Smith. When healthy, Smith is proven to be a top-tier edge rusher, so there will be likely a GM out there who will appreciate that and bring him in. I mean, I feel like a potential fit for Smith could be the New York Giants reuniting him with former Ravens defensive coordinator Wink Martindale. But I do feel the Denver Broncos could also be a potential fit for Smith. Smith, of course, does have some level of familiarity with Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett, who is formerly the offensive coordinator of the Green Bay Packers. The Broncos have salary cap space, so I feel $15.3 million is a fair number for essentially a one-year prove you can still do it deal for Smith. Denver really does make a ton of sense, so Zadarius Smith may be seriously a name to watch for the Denver Broncos this offseason. Next up, we have the other half of the Smith brothers tandem in Preston Smith of the Green Bay Packers. Now, Preston was a former second-round pick by the Washington football team in 2015, and Smith's best season in Washington came in 2017, where he recorded 42 total tackles, 21 quarterback hits, and 8 sacks. After the expiration of his rookie deal in Washington, Smith signed a four-year, $52 million deal with the Green Bay Packers. Now, Smith posted a career season in 2019, where along with fellow free agent signee Zadarius Smith, performed one of the best edge rush tandems in the league. In 2019, including the playoffs, Smith racked up 60 total tackles, 27 quarterback hits, and 14 sacks. Now, 2020 was a down year for Smith, where he recorded just four sacks, but he did bounce back nicely in 2021. Despite losing his running mate in Zadarius Smith for basically the entire season, Preston did rack up 47 total tackles, 19 quarterback hits, and 9 sacks in 17 games, including the postseason in 2021. As mentioned earlier, the Packers are trying to get out of cap hell, and while Zadarius Smith is almost guaranteed to be gone, the Packers may entertain trading Preston Smith as well. Just like Zadarius, the Packers would save the same amount of money by trading or releasing Preston Smith, they would save $12.5 million while eating $7.25 million in dead cap money. 
The Packers may look towards the draft for a younger and cheaper option at edge rusher to pair with 2021 breakout player Rashawn Gary. If that's the case, I could easily see both Smith brothers being elsewhere next season. And just like in the case of Zedaria Smith, Preston does have familiarity with Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett, of course. And at just 29 years old, $12.5 million would be a very fair number for, again, a one-year rental for Preston Smith. I don't necessarily know if the Packers are going to want to move on from him and Zedarius, but if the Packers do move on from one or both of those guys, then they will definitely be on their radar. And last but not least on the list of edge rushers that the Broncos could potentially look to target in a trade, we have Daniil Hunter of the Minnesota Vikings, who's going to be entering just his age 27 season next year. Now, Hunter is a very interesting option. He's a former third-round pick in 2015 by the Minnesota Vikings, so obviously there is familiarity there with Broncos general manager George Payton. Now, Hunter recorded six sacks as a rookie, predominantly as a rotational player, but he had a breakout sophomore season in 2016, recording 56 total tackles, 19 quarterback hits, and 12 and a half sacks. Despite a moderate drop-off in 2017, Hunter posted two of the best seasons of his career in 2018 and 2019, including playoffs combining for 152 total tackles, 46 quarterback hits, and 31 and a half sacks, earning second-team All-Pro in 2018. Unfortunately, Hunter has been plagued by injuries these past two seasons. He missed the entire 2020 season following neck surgery and only played in seven games in 2021 before suffering a season-ending pectoral injury in a game against the Dallas Cowboys. In those seven games, however, Hunter recorded 38 total tackles, 10 quarterback hits, and 6 sacks. So talent is no question for Hunter when he's on the field, but the key word there is when he's on the field. The Vikings are facing a full rebuild, led by completely new regime in GM Kwesi Adolfo Mensah and head coach Kevin O'Connell, and the Vikings are facing a very interesting decision with Hunter. Hunter is due to earn just over $26 million in the 2022 season. That said, the Vikings are in a spot that they could potentially get out of his contract. If Hunter is traded or released pre-June 1st, the Vikings would save $18.6 million while incurring a $7.5 million dead cap hit. If Hunter is released or traded post-June 1st, however, the Vikings would save $22 million while having to eat just over a $4 million cap hit. I do feel that should the Vikings elect to move on from Hunter, it's more likely that he gets released post first rather than traded, given his injury history the past two seasons, as well as the fact that he would cost $14.6 million for his new team if he was traded for pre-June 1st, and $20 million for his new team if he was traded for post-June 1st. Should Hunter get released, I feel he would be a hot commodity on the open market, and the Broncos certainly would have competition for Hunter, but I do feel his familiarity with George Payton would maybe give the Broncos a leg up on other teams should Hunter hit the open market. If Hunter does hit the open market, I would certainly be intrigued in signing him for the right price given his age and his previous production. That said, his... Injury history just makes a trade for him get a little bit too rich for my blood just given the price that it would take. But again, though, I could see George Payton viewing the previous production of Hunter and his familiarity as potential reasons why he may want to give up draft capital to get him. 